In this video, you're gonna learn simple gelling techniques to take a plain room and shot like this one and turn it into these final images. My name is Pai, and I'm one of the founders of Lynn and Jersa Photography and slrlounge.com. We're teaming up with Adorama to bring you a new series of photography tutorials called Master Your Craft right here on Adorama TV. So let's dive in. What's up friends, my name is Pai. Welcome back to Adorama TV. Welcome to my humble abode. Well, at least my home office where I can film. Hopefully you don't hear the screaming children in the background. But look, let's go ahead and just dive straight into this. I'm gonna break this video out so it's easy to find different sections. And the first section, the first thing we're gonna talk about is what do you need for this technique? Well, as far as space goes, I'd recommend a space really anywhere that just has plain walls, okay? So it can be a light color, it can be white, it can be anything, but just plain walls. Ideally, it's a space in your home uh, or studio where you can kind of shut out the lights, you can close blinds and control light. Now for camera and lens, honestly, really anything goes so long as you can control your off camera flashes. And we're approaching a new world. Profoto has now made it possible to use your iPhone and Android to control their flashes. So soon, y'all are gonna have no excuses whatsoever to not be getting out and creating. Okay, so you have your camera, your lens, you're gonna need two off-camera flashes. Pick your poison. You guys know that I shoot Profoto, I love their gear, but look, anything is gonna work. Hop onto the Adorama store, they'll give you recommendations. Pick something that fits the budget. Whatever you got is fine. The techniques totally apply. Okay, so let's move now into one gel techniques. Okay, so we're gonna use a single gel and here's what we're gonna do. This, well, you can see my model is Jay Hersey. We'll link him up. So I have Jay just sitting in the middle of our studio. And if I expose, the, the background looks nice. We have a psych wall and all this kind of stuff. But again, all you really need is just a plain wall and you're gonna learn why in just a second. But if I expose for natural light, the overhead lights, it's really quite nasty. So this is one 200 of a second f2.8 and ISO 400. Shot on a 100 millimeter macro lens, which is also a great portrait lens. And this is shot on my trusty 5D4. This is nothing to look at, of course, but I want you to see what this room would look like should I just allow my camera to kind of set exposure. Now, what we're gonna do is work through the camp framework. I always, always, always use the camp framework because it helps you as the photographer to have a single point to kind of work through step by step until you get to the final image, as opposed to being kind of overloaded and overwhelmed by all the decisions that you have in front of you. So we're gonna start with composition. This is kind of a studio setup and studio shot, so honestly, the composition is pretty straightforward. I believe I put the camera on a tripod uh, just to, did I? I can't remember. Um, but the composition is pretty straightforward. We're basically just shooting a, a close-up portrait of Jay. So we don't have to worry about that too much. Let's go to ambient light. Now this piece is big because what you wanna do is flip off all of the ambient light in the room, unless, you can't do that, in which case you're gonna have to dial down your ambient exposure. So let's go ahead and just take a look at this. So if I wanted to basically, let's look at the final settings and I can tell you exactly what I did. Yeah, so it looks like what I did was I moved from F2.8 to F7 and ISO 100. Now doing that is gonna nix all of the ambient light. In fact, if I were to set an equivalent exposure to this shot, so this is, let's see, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do some dirty math here. I believe that's three stops in aperture and I believe that is uh, two stops. So let's go five stops down. And you can see that darkening the ambient light exposure in camera by five stops nixes all of the ambient light in the room. So if you're keeping your ambient light on, you know, because it's easier to work and not trip over something and impale yourself, then dial the ambient light exposure down. Now this also means that you're gonna be dialing the flash power up. So now that we have that ambient exposure dialed in, because we're choosing basically to only show the light that we're adding to the scene, okay? Now we go to modify. So this is the modify slash add piece of the camp framework. Obviously there's no light in here to modify. So what we're gonna do is be adding light. Start with one flash. You're gonna place whatever gel you like. I'm using red because, well, why did I choose red? Because his jacket, his complexion, everything I felt would really fit and, and look great with his red vibe. I also was kind of feeling 
I was feeling the weekend a little bit, you know? I was feeling the weekend, not like Saturday, Sunday, but like the, the artist, you know, the weekend. And, uh, and this kind of like 80s vibe that I thought the red would really kind of give me. So I'm going with that red gel. We place the red gel on the flash, and you'll see me actually aiming that flash into the back left wall. And what I'm going for is as soon as that flash pops, it creates a wash over the scene. See, it bounces off the wall, and from left to right, we get this gradual bright red to dark red sort of transition. So that's just with that single flash turn on. And honestly, this photograph coming out of it, it's kind of cool already. Like I kind of dig the vibe and, and it could be its own shot in and of itself with just this red hue and tone. Okay, now I like that look and I believe that flash is probably, well at this camera setting, it's probably gonna be somewhere around 100 to 250 watt seconds of power because we are kind of closing down the aperture quite a bit. We are lowering the ISO. So roughly around that range, but it's very easy just to dial up and down based on the look that you're getting, right? Once you've got that first flash set up, you're gonna grab your second flash. With this light, you can add onto it a grid, or you can take it a step further and add a snoot. Now I'm adding a snoot to my flash. What the snoot does, you can kind of think of it as a more intensified grid. See, a grid will control light from spilling everywhere, right? And it kind of funnels the light forward, whereas a snoot is gonna do that in just a more extreme fashion. So a snoot is gonna really pin that light exactly to a particular spot that you want it, and it's not gonna spill at all, okay? So it's an exaggerated grid. So with the snoot on, I've angled it towards Jay's face. I wanna simply light up his face in this dark red kind of room. And we get to this. Now I like it, but my issue with this shot now is that I really want more drama and I want more shadow. I'm lighting up too much of his face and that's because of the angle of the flash. So what I want you guys to do is to push the angle back. So you'll see me actually pushing the flash deeper into the scene so it's more behind Jay. So at first it was kind of closer and more next to him. Now it's really kind of behind and angling forward towards his face. Now doing this adjustment, we get to this spot. And I believe that flash is gonna be firing at not a lot of power. Like we're, we're gonna want like maybe 1 8th to 1 16th ish. We're talking like 20 to 50 watt seconds of light maybe to put kind of onto his face. And then we get this beautiful sort of Rembrandt-esque shadow on the close side of the eye we get this beautiful kind of rim and highlight along the side of his profile. I love everything, the, the way that this look is awesome. So we've got that second light set up and if you wanna see exactly that kind of positioning, here it is, I, I actually shot one image wide so you can see how it's positioned behind him, angled towards his face and that's the light setup. All right, so now we get to the P, the photograph. So what you're gonna do at this point is start shooting. Now here's the fun thing, is I'll usually direct my subject just to kind of move a little bit. And that's when Jay brought his hand up for just a second, and I love the shape that his hand created. And I said, Jay, that's incredible. Now imagine, imagine you're a piano player and your hands are kind of your livelihood. So put your hands kind of out and in front of you and look at them as if this is, is your livelihood. And he did that and we got this shot. And I was like, oh my goodness. I just feel like you play piano, Jay, even though you, you don't, but it looks like you, it, it's fantastic. And I love the look of it, and so we started playing into that look a little bit more, kind of moving the hands in and out, and we end up getting to my first favorite and final shot, which was this image. Now you'll notice that I really haven't done much. So this is the raw file straight out of camera, and in fact, it's actually fully reset right now. So let me just show you, so you, you don't think I'm, I'm joshing y'all. I'm, I'm not joshing y'all, okay? Look, it's completely reset. So we're shooting this straight out of camera and it's basically finished. All I'm doing is I'm usually taking an image like this into Photoshop. I might apply like a Visual Flow Modern to this just to give it an overall warmth to it. And then I take it into Photoshop and just clean up skin just ever so slightly. But it's practically done right out of camera. Now, if you're familiar with the education that I do, then you probably know what I'm about to say next. You've got your light set up, you've got the first shot that you're really digging, and uh, you're like, I'm, I'm good to go with this lighting setup, I'm gonna move on. No, stop, don't, don't go anywhere yet. 
I want you to actually start thinking wide, medium, tight. Start piecing together different angles with that exact same lighting setup. Now, one thing that helps me in doing this, in addition to getting wide, I like to bring in some sort of opposing object. So I brought in this chair and I thought, you know what, we can really do something cool. Jay's quite tall. I wanna do some shots where we sort of exaggerate his limbs and play with the shapes of the shadows. So we brought in just an Apple box and I think you can see like on this shot, I believe this one is, is finished and I've, I've edited out the Matthews box, but he's literally just sitting on a Matthews box as you can see in this photograph, okay? So there it is. So once he's on there, I kind of have him give me some different poses and I'm using the shapes of his body really in the negative space of the frame. So we're thinking, we have to think shadows, right? So because we have a very small space being lit and because most of the image is shadows, you don't wanna use poses here where the limbs are kind of close together. You want spacing so you can see that silhouette and the shapes against the brighter background. So this was my favorite shot from that and I thought it made for such a great piece in kind of going next to the final images, like getting this wide, medium, tight kind of look. Now I believe I shot this one on the 100 millimeter. I believe these ones were shot on a 50. Yep, on my trusty Sigma Art, which always registers as a Tokina Opera. Never owned a Tokina Opera, but Lightroom thinks I did. Now, let's go from a one gel technique to a two gel technique. And this is actually gonna be quite simple. Look, that red light that was angled towards the background. All I'm gonna do now is turn it towards J. The snooted light that was on J, I'm gonna move it to the other side and I'm gonna add to it a blue gel. I'm choosing colors that I think are kind of complementary. That's really all I'm doing, okay? So you can choose any color combination that you like. I'm gonna show you some fun tweaks and tricks in the post side of this too in just a moment. So all you see now is that red light is kind of flaring into the camera. It now becomes the rim light on this side. The blue light is now on the right side and that's kind of our secondary light. But this is the fun part, is that once you have this setup going, you can simply adjust his face position and get a completely different look. See, this is the look that we get. Let me select the one that's actually edited so we don't see that little tiny flare. This is the look that we get from this side. But if I have him actually shift angles and directions and look to the right, then we basically cover his face in blue light and we have a red kicker on the left side. So you can very easily kind of shift the look and just kind of create a completely different vibe to the image by simply adjusting your subject's face. Now this is fun and you can play with this to the nth degree, but I wanna to go to the last piece of this tutorial, okay? So these were all two light gel setups and actually let's look at a couple of the finals real quick before we go to the next step. So I believe these are still the raw files. So really nothing has been done to these, but these are the straight out of camera images that I, I kind of liked. This is the last piece that I wanna show you guys. So let's take this image into post. Now the fun thing when you're using gels as if this whole thing wasn't fun. The whole thing was fun. But look, when you're using gels and you have such distinct colors, you have distinct control of those colors in post. So if I go down to hue, I can grab my adjustment brush and go right over the blues, and I can shift these blues to any color that I really want. It, you can even take this a step further and take it into Photoshop and target only blues, and you have complete control of where you go with those colors. I can grab the reds and I can say, I'd like to shift the reds more towards kind of this purple side. And I wanna shift his skin tone more towards kind of the purple side and end up with this kind of more consistent hue overall. So that's one very fun aspect of using gels is this complete kind of freedom in color control in post. Now, here's the other cool part about this. If I actually flip this to a black and white, it looks as if it was shot with just any plain sort of lighting. So you still get these really great black and whites. If you find that you know, you're playing around with the gels and maybe you didn't like the colored look of the image set, you can flip it to black and white and still get to really great portraits. That's it, I hope y'all enjoyed. If you did, I'd love for you, as always, please subscribe to the Adorama TV channel and turn on notifications. So when I come back next Friday, you're actually notified that I'm back with a new video. In the meantime, please comment below. Let me know what you think about the video. I don't always get a chance to reply, but I do read the comments and get ideas for future videos. And until next time, you guys can follow me at Born Uncreative or at Pygersa on Instagram. Peace.